get started with chapter three, problem number one. Uh, SDJ Corporation has networking capital of 2710, current liability is 3950, inventory of 3420. How do we calculate the current ratio and what is the quick ratio? Equation networking capital we need to calculate first uh, because uh, well, actually it's given we needed to calculate current assets. We're not given current assets. Uh, current assets are then equal to networking capital plus current liabilities. Again, if we're not given a certain variable, we need to calculate it. <clears throat> so uh, then I can plug the current assets into my current ratio equation. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. And then quick ratio is current assets minus inventory over current liabilities. So to get uh, current assets, I need to take 2710 of networking capital plus 3950 of current liabilities. And then I'm going to divide that by current liabilities and I get an answer of 1.686 times for the current ratio. And then for quick ratio, I need to find out how really liquid is my company up by subtracting inventory. So I take current assets minus inventory over current liabilities. 2710 plus 3950 again are my current assets minus uh, my inventory of 3420 and divide that by current liabilities of uh, 3950 and I get an answer of 0.8203 times. And since I'm dividing dollars by dollars, that's where the time comes from. 0 0.8203 times is my answer for problem number one. In problem number two, we have diamond eyes with sales of 18 million, assets of 15.6 million, total debt of 6.3 million, and a profit margin of 8%. And we want to know what is the net income, what is the return on assets, what is the return on equity. To get return on anything, I simply take net income divided by then anything. So to get a return on assets, I like to call it net return on assets, I take net income divided by assets. To get net return on equity, I take net income over equity. In the first order of business, I must calculate my net income. I do that by taking profit margin percent, which is also known as net return on sales, times sales, and that will get me my net income number. So to get net income, I take 8% of uh, sales of $18 million, and I get $1,440,000. And then I can use that to calculate net return on assets and net return on equity. To get net return on assets, I take net income of 1440000 divided by assets of 15.6 million. And I get an answer of 9.2308%. As my net return on assets, then for my net return on equity, I take my net income over equity. Now, equity I have to calculate by taking my total assets minus my total liabilities or total debt. So I take uh, 1560000 of assets uh, minus 6.3 million of total debt, put that in the denominator, and I get a uh, percent return on equity of 15.4839. 15.4839. There you go, there are your two answers for problem number two. In problem 3.3, Boom Lake Corporation has accounts receivable of 327815, sales of 4238720. What are their uh, receivables turnover figures and their day sales outstanding? Receivables turnover, simply sales over receivables, and day sales outstanding is simply uh, that number divided by 365. <clears throat> so, for, uh, to get the receivables turnover, I take the sales of 4238720 divided by the accounts receivable of 327815, and I get a receivables turnover of 12.9302 times. Uh, and then to calculate my day sales outstanding, I take 365 divided by that number of 12.9302 times. I get 28.2284 days sales outstanding. That means uh, my receivables are collected every 28.22 days. 28.23 days, and that's the answer to problem number three. In problem number four, Cape Corp has inventory of $43,167 and cost of goods sold of $4,285,131. What are their inventory turnover and their day sales and inventory? Uh, inventory turnover is cost of goods sold over inventory, and 
day sales and inventory, 365 over that number. So it's a very simple problem. <clears throat> so to get inventory turnover, I take my 4285131 of cost of goods sold, divide that by my inventory dollars of 483167, and I get a solution of 8.8688 times. Turn my uh, inventory over 8.8688 times per year. And then my day sales and inventory, how many days of inventory are sitting there? Um, 365 over 8.8688 and I get 41.1553 days sales in inventory. Those are your answers to problem number four. In number five, Perry Inc. has total debt ratio of 0.46. That's all we're given. They want to know what is their debt to equity ratio and what is their equity multiplier. So this one's a little bit tricky. If I'm not giving a cert given a certain variable, I must calculate it. <clears throat> My total debt ratio is debt to assets, total debt over total assets. So I'm given total debt, I just don't have total assets. And um, total assets I can calculate by taking total debt plus total equity. Assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity per the balance sheet equation. So to get the debt equity ratio that they're looking for, I need to take my total debt, which I have, but I need to calculate my total equity. And my equity multiplier is simply debt over equity plus one. Also, uh, could be calculated by taking assets over equity. So um, the solution, assets equal debt plus equity. So if I have a dollar of assets, I have 46 cents of debt. That means I have 54 cents of equity. So that allows me to get my equity number. So I can calculate my debt to equity ratio by taking the 0.46 divided by the 0.54 and I get 0.85185 times is my debt to equity ratio. Then to get the equity multiplier, I can take assets over equity or I can go one plus debt to, e one plus debt to equity. So if I take assets over equity, it's $1 of assets divided by 54 cents in equity and I get 1.85185 times, which should just be equal to one plus debt to equity ratio and it works out as planned. Those are the answers to problem number five. In problem number six, we have that which corporation has additions to retained earnings of 375,000, dividends of $175,000, equity of $4.8 million shares, outstanding 145,000 shares. Stock sells for 79 bucks a share. Their sales are $4.7 million. On um, this one, we're given about a dozen givens, and we have to calculate about half a dozen uh, calculations. So let's get started. Earnings per share. Earnings is the same thing as net income, or NPAT. Um, so I take net, incomes divided, net income divided by shares outstanding. Now, I'm not given net income, but I know that net income consists of dividends plus retained earnings. So I add these two numbers to get um, my net income, and that should be 375,000 plus 175,000 in the numerator. So 375,000 plus 175,000 in the numerator divided by 145,000 uh, shares and I get 3.7931 uh, per share. 3.7931 dollars per share. So again to get the net income I take the uh, additions to retain earnings plus the dividends in the numerator and divide that by 145,000 shares. To get dividends per share, I take dividends divided by shares outstanding, simply 175,000 divided by 145,000 shares, or 1.2069 per share. To get book value per share, book value, same thing as equity, same thing as stockholders' equity, shareholders' equity, just plain equity. $4.8 million of equity that's given divided by 145,000 shares, I get book value of $33.1034 per share. To get market to book, I take market value or price per share divided by a book value per share that I just calculated. So I take the $79 it's given and divide that by 33.1034 book value per share to get market to book ratio. And I see I've increased my book value by 2.3865 times in the management of the company. My price to earnings ratio is price per share divided by earnings per share. Price per share given at $79. Earnings per share we calculated up here at $3.79. So I take my uh, price per share of $79 divided by 3.7931. I get 20.8273 times is my PE ratio. And I can compare that to all kinds of other companies, uh, PE ratios, industry uh, PE ratios, and so on. 
Uh, my price to sales ratio is simply price per share divided by sales per share. Sales per share not given. I must calculate that. So I take my sales in the denominator of 4.7 million divided by 145,000 shares outstanding. And uh, I get uh, $79 price per share divided by that in the denominator. And I get price to sales ratio of 2.4372 times. Those are your solutions to problem number six. In problem number seven, we have Ritz and Reuters with an equity multiplier 1.45 times, total asset turnover 1.8 times, uh, profit margin of 5.5%. What is their percent return on equity? Our equation is return on equity is profit margin times total asset turnover times equity multiplier. So it's very simple. We just multiply the three givens together and nothing to find. <clears throat> 0.055 is your um, profit margin, 1.8 is your total asset turnover, 1.45 is your equity multiplier, and I get a percent return on equity of 14.3550%. That is your answer to problem number seven. And problem number eight, we have Kindle Fire Protection Corporation with a profit margin of 4.6%. Total asset turnover of 2.3 times and percent return on equity of 19.14%. They want to know what is their debt to equity ratio. Uh, the formula for ROE is profit margin times asset turnover times equity multiplier. And once I have my equity multiplier, I can subtract one to get my debt to equity ratio, which is what I'm looking for uh, ultimately. So I just fill in the uh, givens. 0.1914 is my return on equity. 0.046 is my profit margin, 2.3 times is my asset turnover, and from that I can uh, calculate my equity multiplier. I get an equity multiplier of 1.8091 times, and then to get that to equity, I can subtract one and get 0.8091 times. There are your answers to problem number eight.